Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. What you're looking at here is a mobile app running in the iOS simulator in Xcode, which is all running on my Mac. This app was written in JavaScript using the React Native framework with access to the IBM Watson Discovery service. On the home page of the app, you'll see a list of news articles related to IBM. If you click on the host website link, you'll, you can view the entire article. If you click on the analysis link, you'll see a list of insights generated by Watson Discovery. It shows you the overall sentiment uh, score for the article, plus keywords and concepts. If you then click on one of those links, you'll get a more refined search based on that keyword or concept. If you'd like to learn more about how this app was built and how it integrates with Watson Discovery, check out the code pattern located on GitHub at github.com slash IBM slash build react native app for Watson Discovery. I'll also provide a link to this in the video description. If you look through the README, you can get all the background details on the technologies used plus step-by-step -step instructions on how to build and run the app. So the main purpose for creating this code pattern was to showcase the React Native framework integrated with a Watson service. For those not familiar, React Native is a popular cross-platform mobile development UI framework that allows developers to write mobile apps that run on either iOS or Android. So the React Native has several things going for it. The platform is based on a, the very popular React framework for building user interfaces. It uses JavaScript, which is familiar to most mobile developers. It provides great debugging tools and error reporting. Uh, developers can use the same code for both iOS and Android platforms. It provides hot reloading of code, which is a great time saver for developers. Uh, developers can still use native code if necessary, which may be the case because currently um, React Native doesn't support every native iOS and Android feature. So if you look at the project structure in our repo, you'll see that all of the React Native assets are stored in this subdirectory, React Native Code Pattern. If you open that up, you see a package JSON file, which points to all the required packages. You will also see an iOS and Android directory. These directories are auto-generated for you when you create a React Native project. Um, as a convenience, we've done this for you and included the generated files in the repo. If you look outside those directories, you will see uh, the custom code which comprises our app. Um, we have an index file, which is our entry point, an app file, which loads the main class, If you go into source, you will see a router file to define the navigation routes. A discovery file where we define our search parameters for Watson Discovery. And we have a components directory uh, where we define our Visual React components. If we go back to the README, as mentioned before, we give step-by-step -step instructions for building the app. Our first step is to clone the GitHub repo to our local machine. We then CD to that local repo and then into the React Native Code Pattern directory. Uh, we create a Watson Discovery Service instance on IBM Cloud. Uh, when you do, you will generate a set of credentials, which you can then cut and paste into the global.js file. Um, before we run our app, we need to make sure we have npm installed. We also need Xcode um, to run the iOS 
simulator. We then run npm install to import all of our packages. Then run the command react native run iOS to build and run the app in the simulator. At the bottom of the readme, we have a list of some optional steps you can take. Here is a command to run in Android mode. Uh, note that this will involve setting up an Android Studio so you can deploy an Android virtual device that the app can run on. Here we point to some documentation on how to run on an actual device. Here we show how to change the company or topic used for the initial, initial search. This is done in the discovery.js file. Here you see the query sent to Watson Discovery. And as you can see, it's pretty involved. It sets a crawl date and requests aggregates to create insights. Buried down in the filter parameter, you will see IBM. So if you change this, the app should change the, the list of articles that it presents in the app. Speaking of Watson Discovery, the last optional step we list is some instructions on how to access and explore the data generated by Watson Discovery. So we are using the Watson Discovery News collection, which is a collection that you get for free when you sign up for an instance of Watson Discovery. It's a continuously updated data collection of recent news articles that comes pre-enriched with insights such as sentiment, keywords, entities, categories, and concepts, uh, some of which we display in the mobile app. The discovery service provides a nice set of tools uh, to play around with the data. Uh, you can build and run your own custom queries and see the results. So with that, I think I'll wrap this up for now. Hopefully you'll get a chance to download and run this code pattern on your own. Thanks again for your time.